Global leaders of the travel and tourism community, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. It is my great pleasure to be with you for GTEF 2020, this year virtually. As we all know, the theme of GTEF 2020 is solidarity and innovation, restarting tourism in the new global economy. This year, 2020, GTF is putting spotlight on exceptional leaders during these exceptional times. Leaders who are not only navigating the challenges of COVID-19 on their impacting business results, but also looking at how they are working to support frontliners in their local communities. To that end, I am honored to have with me for this interview, Daryl Ng. He is the deputy chairman of the Sino Group. The Sino Group is based in Hong Kong, established in 1970, and has grown to become a leading property developer with an investment and development portfolio of more than 224 projects across 84.6 million square feet. Their core businesses encompass development of residential properties, offices, industrial and real estate properties, as well as the sale and investment in Hong Kong, mainland, Singapore, and Australia. Widely diversified, the group comprises private companies owned by the Ung family, as well as listed companies. Daryl, I'm honored to have you with me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Anita. I'm curious to understand, the pandemic has no doubt had a tremendously detrimental impact on the tourism industry. What are your thoughts on how the industry will move forward? And is there anything positive that you believe can be coming from this crisis? Thank you, Anita. First of all, um, huge thanks to Pansy for including me in this forum. Really appreciate it. Um, I believe that uh, more dialogue and communication is so important, especially uh, this year. Recently, we have seen numbers from China. Uh, the numbers from China looks very promising. Um, the airline-related businesses, the hotel-related businesses, they seem to be delivering strong numbers the last two, three months. So that, that is quite promising. Cities like Singapore, Hong Kong, Macau, even Maldives, who really rely on international travel, um, we have seen huge challenges for these cities this year. Um, so the thing is, obviously, we have businesses in Singapore and Hong Kong. Um, the hotel uh, sector um, has been hit, and it has been very, very challenging. I was very happy to see um, the uh, recent uh, announcement of the air travel bubble between Hong Kong and Singapore. I think that's very promising. We were all looking for it. For it. Um, unfortunately, it's been postponed, but I really believe that um, when the air travel bubble between Hong Kong and Singapore um, uh, is resumed, then um, that will also lead to uh, more travel bubbles within the region and hopefully around the world. And that is the first important step um, for rebuilding the global travel. Um, the other point that I think we have all learned through this year's uh, COVID crisis is that we hope that the government leaders around the world can really discuss and work together now to discuss that what's going to happen in several years' time when there's another virus crisis like COVID. Because in the last 30, 40 years, we have seen strong viruses such as MERS, swine flu, H1N1, avian flu, to name a few. And these viruses occur every several years. So this is the first year that global travel has really been shut down completely. We in the travel industry really hope that um, there's enough preparation, dialogue, and planning that is done now, such that when a virus crisis like this hit again, um, the governments around the world are already prepared in terms of having a plan that saves lives but also sustains livelihoods. Daryl, you make such interesting points there. And I love that you're emphasizing that this year has been a pause for us all to course correct and make sure that when we reopen the world and we restart the global economy, we do it in a way that's responsible. 
Uh, many have questioned whether the concept of sustainability is something that we can focus on in the future. And I'm hearing from you that we can't not focus on it. I'd love to understand from you, responsible tourism, a critical way in which the world can restart tourism needs to be brought to life. But what in your mind is responsible tourism? And are you seeing some new trends and new opportunities opening up as the new world of tourism opens up? Please. Thank you, Anita. Uh, that's a very long question. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to share that, uh, first of all, we're working really hard at the Sino Group um, and, of course, our subsidiaries um, on tackling uh, climate change. How do we do that? We definitely have to have a more sustainable business operations. So we've set targets for ourselves. Um, and this was um, in 2012. In 2012, we set a target by uh, 2020, we wanted to reduce our carbon footprint by 15%. Well, 2020 is this year. And through our analysis and our audits, we, um, we are happy to find that um, we, are, we have actually reduced our carbon footprint from uh, 2012, 2012 to this year by 17.6% group-wide. So, so um, that's, um, that's good news for us, but we hope that we can further reduce our group carbon footprint. So that's number one. Number two, um, in terms of sustainable tourism, eco-tourism, um, in 2008, two, 2008, um, we set up a charitable foundation to put in a uh, bid for uh, a government tender. And in two, uh, two zero, uh, 2012, around there, um, the Tai O um, Heritage Hotel was open to the public. And basically, it is this very charming nine-room boutique hotel with one restaurant at the edge of Lantau Island in this small fishing village with no no road for cars. And actually, um, you know, it's, it's been very, very well received. And um, we're, we're happy to say that um, throughout our opening until now, our occupancy has averaged about 85%. This year, during COVID, um, we're averaging about 95% since March, because I think the Hong Kong friends cannot travel overseas. And for them, it's a, it's a nice, a uh, relaxing break um, from the city, busy life, and, and, and they, they, they've really been um, enjoying themselves at this boutique hotel. And two years ago, we actually started another project uh, through our Tayo Hotel to help restore the very famous and beautiful stilt houses um, in Tayo um, to preserve the traditional architecture of Hong Kong and the collective memories of the community. And so far, uh, Throughout these two years, we have actually restored seven stilt houses. So the next time you come to Hong Kong, we would love to show you around Tai O uh, Village and, and the hotel. And we really feel that it's very important to, you know, give opportunities and prepare the, the, the youth of Hong Kong uh, for the future. This year, during the uh, midst of COVID, we launched the Hospitality Young Leaders Program. And what is this? Basically, through the Tai O Hotel, um, we launched this program, and um, it's to train these fresh grads, fresh hotel grads um, of, of Hong Kong uh, universities in hospitality and ecotourism by providing them with comprehensive and practical on-the-job training. Now, I spent a bit of time with them this year, talking to them and, and you know, introducing Tai O and the, the charitable foundation to them. And they were so appreci appreciative because they shared with me that this year, it is actually so challenging for the fresh graduates of hotel schools to find jobs uh, in tourism sectors. So they were so appreciative, the 10 of them. And we told them that, you know, we will definitely do more in this program and hopefully we can, we can extend um, and hire um, more, of the, more of these uh, fantastic young young students. I like to uh, 
share with you a, uh, a, um, this award that's very close to my heart because about six, seven years ago, uh, UNESCO, uh, UNESCO um, they came to Hong Kong and we had meetings with them and they, they actually uh, worked with us. Uh, they really came to understand what was happening with Tayo. And uh, several years ago, they awarded us with the UNESCO Award um, of Merit uh, for Cultural Heritage Conservation. And we were so uh, happy and overjoyed because um, this, uh, this made us the first hotel uh, in Hong Kong to get the UNESCO Award. So um, thank you, Anita. I must say, Daryl, I'm, I'm loving talking to you because clearly you're not just a leader in tourism, you're a guardian angel in tourism. So much of our sector is about preserving and celebrating cultures. And it's so lovely to hear that you've been so busy despite the pandemic, keeping momentum going in a way that's even getting the next generation of people working in our industry excited and keeping them hopeful about what is potential for them in the future of tourism. Building on that, as we know, solidarity and innovation and reshaping tourism for the new global economy is at the heart of GTEF 2020. And GTEF always gets the theme right. They always understand how to bring the best minds together to really be creative and innovative. You've spoken very much about how geographical areas when developing tourism can work so beautifully when it comes to developing hospitality projects, especially projects that, as you've just said, maintain a protection, a preservation and a promotion of historical areas that have every right to continue to be celebrated in the future. Can you share with me what role innovation has played in all of this work that you've been doing? Thank you, Anita. Um, well, number one, you're too kind, so thank you very much. Um, I think regarding innovation, um, I, like to, I like to quote um, a remark that uh, a government friend of mine uh, told me last year when we were talking about tourism in general. He said to me, tourism is education with no classrooms. It is marketing with no words. It's diplo diplomacy with no meetings, politics with no slogans, and industry with no smoking chimneys. And when he sent uh, this to me, I, I, I you know, I, I, I really was inspired because I agree with you, Anita. I think tourism goes beyond a certain percentage of our GDP, of any city, of any country. Tourism connects people. It allows different communities and different people of different countries to understand each other. They bring so much joy and memories, even to the layman. Um, they create positive reinforcements um, for the next generation when they're traveling with their elders or their families to a new country. I mean, for me, all, all these things are intangible in terms of GDP, but it's so important to build a better world with more harmonious communities. And so um, I'm very excited to share that actually next year in uh, late uh, 2021, we're very excited to uh, bring uh, our Fulton brand to Hong Kong for the first time and to a very special place in Hong Kong called the Ocean Park. And so uh, we've been working very hard and working very closely with the Ocean Park colleagues and the Hong Kong government uh, officials because the Ocean Park colleagues and the Hong Kong government officials, they have this um, revitalization plan for Ocean Park as well as the whole Aberdeen area. And I'm not sure whether you know Hong Kong well, but um, Aberdeen's Chinese name is actually Hong Kong Zai. Hong Kong Zai is actually Little Hong Kong. Uh, uh, Hong Kong Zai, Little Hong Kong. And um, there's a lot of heritage and history in Aberdeen in that, in that, in that uh, district. And so we're very excited because as we're working with Ocean Park and the Hong Kong government, um, we find that um, what we've been doing in Singapore and Sydney through our Fulton brand, we're, we're also extending that um, 
uh, sense of place, sense of heritage, sense of culture and history to the whole Ocean Park and um, Aberdeen project. So we're very, very excited. Hopefully when uh, you know, COVID settles and you can come visit um, uh, Hong Kong, we will also bring you around uh, the Ocean Park um, uh, area and you can uh, come visit the Fulton Ocean Park and um, see what it's all about. Daryl, I must admit that I'm sitting here smiling because through the camera, I can see my passport on the table and it's smiling back thinking, we're gonna take Daryl up on that very kind innovation. Sir, it has been such a joy speaking with you today. And I'm so grateful that you've been a part of GTEF 2020. Thank you. Anita, it's a pleasure and thank you so much.